Hey everyone, we are Jamie and Skylar, and in this video, we're gonna be sharing five things we love and five things we don't about cruising with MSC. And after that, we're gonna share with you our top 10 tips to help you make the most of your cruise with MSC. Now combined, we have sailed on over 20 cruises with five different cruise lines, but it wasn't actually until last year that we finally tried our very first MSC cruise. And before we get into our likes and dislikes, I wanna start off by saying that MSC is what we would consider to be a discount cruise line, meaning they generally are going to be a little more affordable than a lot of other cruises, but they won't offer all of the comforts and perks that you may find on a more expensive cruise. Now, if you're used to sailing on a higher end cruise line like Celebrity or Princess, and you're expecting similar quality of food, drinks, and service, then you're probably going to end up a bit disappointed. But it's always important to compare apples to apples. You wouldn't spend 80 bucks for a room at the Best Western and complain that it's not the Ritz Carlton, and that's why it's so frustrating to see people out there trashing on MSC without even mentioning the fact that they probably paid far less for their MSC cruise than they did for the cruises they're comparing it to. Now don't get us wrong, MSC does have its fair share of shortfalls and we will get into those later in this video, but it also does some things even better than the higher priced cruise lines. And one of those things is actually the very first reason that we love cruising on MSC and that is the coffee. So the majority of MSC's newer ships were built in Italy and MSC itself has some strong Italian roots. So it may come as no surprise that MSC ships have some very Italian qualities such as skipping the 17th floor and having some awesome coffee. Now from our recent experiences sailing on both the Seaside and the Maravilla, we found that the coffee was really good, but that you could also get it almost anywhere on the ship because we found that most of the bars offer these fancy espresso machines. We also love that the lattes, cappuccinos, and other coffee drinks are included in the more basic drink packages on MSC ships, whereas on other cruise lines, you have to pay extra for those coffee drinks, even if you have purchased a basic drink package. Yeah, I think when we sailed on Norwegian, the only way to get a good specialty coffee was to purchase it from the Starbucks on board. And from our Royal Caribbean experience, we had to purchase a punch pass or pay per coffee. So so this is really nice for someone like me that does not drink a lot of alcohol because a lot of the cruise lines do require that if one person in the stateroom gets the alcohol package, the other person does as well. Now Skylar will always get his money's worth out of a drink package, but we did often feel like it was a bit of wasted money for me when I'm only drinking maybe one to two alcoholic drinks per day. So including these additional specialty coffees really makes it feel like I get more value out of that drink package. Now the second thing we love about cruising with MSC is another thing you'd probably expect from an Italian cruise line and that is some amazing pizza and Italian food in general. So from our experiences cruising on Norwegian, Royal, Carnival, and Celebrity, the pizza is mediocre at best. <laughs> And we've even had some that was borderline inedible. But the pizza on MSC is legit Neapolitan style pizza. The crust is always made fresh and is light and airy, and the sauce is never overly sweet. Now we did find that there weren't usually a lot of options, but we really enjoyed going to the buffet and adding our own, like artichokes, olives, pesto, and even the cold cuts. But pizza isn't the only type of Italian food you'll find on the buffet, as there's always a good variety of pastas and fresh breads and pastries as well. And I generally stick to a pretty low carb diet and try not to eat the pastas and breads while on cruises, but that all goes out the window on MSC because their breads and pastas are so good. And if you happen to sail on the Meravia, they actually have a fresh mozzarella station. And that was actually the best cheese that we have had on a cruise ship buffet ever. Now, if the coffee and pizza isn't enough to get you on an MSC cruise, the parties just might be. And before we get into this one, I wanna point out that we wouldn't consider MSC to be a party cruise line. And if you do wanna go on a cruise that's all party all the time, you should probably just book with Carnival. <laughs> Now you don't feel like a party is being forced upon you all the time on an MSC cruise, but the organized parties that they did offer, we thought they were excellent. There was great turnout and great participation. We really loved how on the Maravilla, the performers from the theater actually came out into the promenade after the shows and participated in the parties. And the parties on the seaside, both in the atrium and on the ship deck were really fun as well. 
We have experienced some really fun parties on other cruise lines too, but I don't think they were as consistently enjoyable as the parties that we experienced on MSC. And we haven't even mentioned the king of all cruise ship parties, which is the lighthouse show and the dance party on the beach at Ocean K. I mean, what other cruise line offers a dance party on a Caribbean beach under the stars? None that we're aware of. And not only is it a truly unique experience, but a ton of fun as well. And even if you're not into dancing, just sitting out on the beach and taking in that lighthouse show is something I think almost anyone can enjoy. And that leads into the next thing that we love about cruising with MSC. And if you have seen our prior cruise tour episode, then it is not a surprise to you. And that is the island. And if you're considering cruising with MSC out of the U.S., then odds are you will be visiting MSC's private island, Ocean K. And unlike most cruise lines that may only spend six to eight hours on the private island, a lot of these sailings for MSC spend over 24 hours at their private island. And that means not only do you not have to worry about drinking too much and having the ship leave you, but it also means you'll get to be out on the island at night, which as we mentioned earlier, is a pretty epic experience. We also love that Ocean K is a marine reserve and MSC has planted thousands of plants and trees and has created a coral nursery on the island. And Ocean K isn't nearly as built up as some of the other cruise line islands, but that's actually one thing we love about it. That's true. It is extremely tranquil and makes you feel like you're on a remote island, but it still offers options for food, drinks, and probably one of our favorite bars of all time. Yeah, especially since Bombas on Tortola got taken out by that hurricane, I would have to say that the Lighthouse Bar on Ocean K is hands down my favorite beach bar, and it's 100% due to the atmosphere. It's a beautiful Hemingway style bar with tons of seating both in and out of the sun. Your drink package from the ship works on the island so you don't have to worry about how much you're spending on drinks and it offers some great views of the ship, the lighthouse, the Caribbean, and even the sunsets. Yeah, it's really hard to be and we'll give you some tips on how to make the most out of your time on the island later in this video. Now the fifth and final thing we love about cruising on MSC is something we mentioned earlier and that is the value. Now we've sailed with MSC three times, once in 2022 and twice in 2023. And since we love the shorter cruises, they were all three nighters out of Florida. Now on each of those three cruises, our booking came with the Easy Plus drink package, which includes unlimited alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages up to $10 in value. Now for those three cruises, we paid a total of $2,421. And if you divide that by nine nights and two people, that comes out to less than $135 per person per night. Now that includes unlimited food, drinks, housekeeping, entertainment, and a day and a half on a private island. Now, even though there are some things we don't love about cruising with MSC that we will get into later, the value is absolutely ridiculous, especially when considering you can't even find a beachfront hotel here in Florida without food and drinks included for that price. And if you're a single cruiser, the value of cruising on MSC can be even greater because they occasionally do run single cruiser specials. We were able to bring Skyler's mom with us on a three night cruise for $319. That is only around $107 a day. Now cruising has become a lot more popular again lately, so you probably won't find those good of deals again anytime soon. But if you go over to vacations to go and check out the cruise prices, you're probably going to find that MSC is still offering some of the best deals on cruises, especially if you factor in the drink packages. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we don't love everything about cruising with MSC. And when you're cruising for ridiculously cheap like we were, you have to expect some shortcomings. And for us, the first one is the buffet. Now, don't get us wrong. We had no problem finding some really good Italian food on the lunch and dinner buffets and the breakfast. Breakfast buffet was actually pretty good as well, but where the buffet experience fell short was with the variety of food and the layout of the buffet itself. Yeah, I'll say our experience on the seaside was a little bit better than our experience on the Maravilla because the seaside does have two buffets, one that's larger and one that's smaller, but the larger buffet on the seaside and the buffet on the Maravilla, they both didn't seem to have the best layout. Even when these buffet areas weren't too busy, it seemed like the lines moved pretty slowly, and when they were busy, 
They were quite chaotic. There were actually a couple of times where we chose to go to just a sit down restaurant experience just to avoid the whole buffet experience. And as far as the variety, I would say that the choices on MSC's buffets are a little bit limited compared to some of the other cruise lines that we've been on. And the choices don't change as much from day to day. That's not as big of a deal on a short three day cruise like the ones we were on, but on a longer cruise that would definitely become more of a negative. Now, another thing I do not love about cruising with MSC is the technology. When you cruise with MSC, bookings often come with a free drink package and also free unlimited Wi-Fi. Now, both of those perks sound amazing and that drink package absolutely is, but the free unlimited Wi-Fi does leave a bit to be desired. And honestly, it doesn't bother me a whole lot because I actually enjoy being disconnected when I'm on a cruise. But if you're like Jamie and need to be posting an Instagram <laughs> story about every three seconds. Hey, I am not on it that much. Either way, it's a little bit inconvenient. Now I agree that it is nice to be disconnected at times, but I also like to be able to stay in contact with family and also post the occasional Instagram story when we are on a cruise. But this Wi-Fi was difficult to get connected, it was slow, and it was not reliable. We also weren't too impressed with MSC's app. I feel like on some of the other cruise lines, we were on the app all the time. They were very user-friendly and very helpful whereas MSC's app just wasn't very easy to use and therefore we weren't on it too much. Overall, MSC's technology did seem to be a bit behind on the times, but on the seaside, they did have these smart elevators and they were supposed to move people about the ship more efficiently. Yeah, we definitely were not sold on the smart elevators because sometimes we would have to wait a few minutes for an elevator and other times it would simply tell us that there was no elevator available and honestly, it really wasn't that big of a deal for us because we could always just take the stairs but for someone who's less mobile and can't get around as well it would be really frustrating to have to wait a long time for those elevators on the seaside and speaking of frustrating I'd have to say that some of the most frustrating cruise experiences I've ever had is trying to get a drink at some of the MSC bars now to elaborate a little bit there are definitely certain bars and certain bartenders who seem to give almost no consideration to which customer had actually been waiting at the bar the longest and that of course leads to the loudest and most impolite customer or the one wearing the tiniest bikini to getting served first. And some of the bartenders would actually ask the customers who was next as if it was the customer's responsibility to kind of keep track of who's been waiting at the bar the longest. Now some of the bars had more of a single file line system which did work better because at least you knew you'd eventually get served but Overall, there were a lot of frustrations with the MSC bars, but we will give you a few tips that we learned to make your MSC bar experience better later in this video. Another thing we don't love about cruising on MSC is the muster station process. As we mentioned earlier, we have cruised on five different cruise lines and the muster drill on MSC has been the most inconvenient and the most confusing. Yeah, some other cruise lines really seem to be embracing technology to make the muster process easier, like when we reached recently cruised on Norwegian, we were actually able to watch a mustard drill video in line at the terminal and then just find a staff member on the ship to scan our cards and the process was done. But from our experiences on MSC, they shut down the whole ship and make you go to your stateroom. And there you have to watch a safety video on your TV and then you have to call a phone number from your stateroom phone. At that point, you have to wait for your deck to be called, and then you can go to your muster drill station for a staff member to scan your card, and finally the process is over. And while we definitely do appreciate MSC's commitment to safety, the whole multi-step process does seem to be a little bit inefficient and can definitely put a bit of a damper on the first night of your cruise. And that leads us to the final thing that we don't love about sailing on MSC, and that's the complimentary dining experience. Now, because the food in the MSC main dining rooms was really good, the overall experience is pretty decent, but it could be so much better if they improve the service. Yeah, and it's not that the waiters aren't working hard or aren't friendly because they really are. There just doesn't seem to be enough of them. You can normally count on your waiter to take your food order and bring you your food, but you may never see them other than that. Now, if you're used to a dining experience like on Celebrity where you've got two waiters and a sommelier who are absolutely bending over backwards to make sure you have an excellent dining experience, then you will 
will be let down with MSC. Yeah, I feel like on MSC there are a couple times where no one even asked us for our drink orders. And even when they do ask you for your drink orders, the options seem to be really limited. Now that wraps up the five things we loved and didn't about cruising on MSC. There is definitely plenty to like and dislike about this cruise line, but if you go into it knowing what to expect and how to make the most of it, you can still have an excellent time. And that leads us to the 10 tips to help you have a great experience on your MSC cruise. Our first tip is to find a good bartender and to stick with them. And as I mentioned earlier, the bar service on MSC ships can be a bit of an adventure, but there are so many bars to choose from and there are some really good bartenders. So when you find one, talk to them, find out what bars they work at and when, and it never hurts to leave a decent tip. And in our experience, this is one of the best ways to make sure that you're not spending half of your MSC cruise waiting in line for drinks. Another drink related tip is to grab a drink from a bar on the way to the main dining room. One great thing about cruises is that you can get a drink from a bar and take it anywhere on the ship with you. So we'd recommend visiting your favorite bartender at your favorite bar, getting a good cocktail and bringing it to dinner. One of my favorite things to do was to visit the champagne bar before dinner and getting one of their specialty champagne cocktails that you can only get at that bar and bringing it to dinner with me. Our third tip for sailing with MSC is to eat and drink like an Italian. And as we mentioned earlier, the newer MSC cruise ships were built in Italy and they do Italian things very well. So drink the coffee, eat the pizza and the pastas, the breads and the cheeses, and don't be afraid to go back for seconds. Now, before we move on to our next tip, we do want to mention that all of our MSC cruises, we have booked standard rooms. MSC ships do offer a higher end option, which is known as the Yacht Club, but that does come with a higher price tag as well. Those rooms are located in a specific area of the ship. They have their own dining room, bar, and pool, and I think they come with some additional perks as well. So if you're watching this and have happened to experience the MSC Yacht Club, please do let us know what that experience was like and whether or not it's worth the money. But if you just want to see more of our MSC cruising experience, please be sure to check out one of our two tour videos after this one. Another food related tip is to head to the back of the main buffets. On both the seaside and the Maravilla, we found that the back buffet areas, the farthest away from the entrances, were the least busy. And they also had nice outdoor seating areas with the best views of the water. So even when the buffet areas were crazy, we could still find seats in the back. Another food related tip is that if you are looking for a higher quality dining experience, do consider booking at some of the specialty restaurants. Now we have gotten the chance to tour several of these restaurants and they all look really good. And based on the reviews we've read and also the fact that these restaurants normally get completely booked up, we'd guess to say that the food is really good as well. But if you do want to eat at some of these specialty restaurants, we would recommend purchasing a dining package and making your reservation early. Our next tip is to find the hidden bars on the ship. For whatever reason, there always seems to be one or two bars that are a little bit harder to find and therefore they're just never that busy. And given the long wait times at some of the bars on the MSC ships, being able to find these bars is an even greater benefit. On our most recent cruise on the seaside, we found those bars to be located in the chocolate shop and also in chef's court. Now sticking with the topic of drinks, our seventh tip is to inquire with the cruise line before deciding to upgrade your drink package. Now the reason I suggest this is because on our Mayor vehicle cruise if you wanted to buy a $15 drink but only had a drink package that covered drinks up to $10 you would have to pay the entire $15 price for that more expensive drink but on our seaside cruise in the same scenario if you purchase that $15 drink with the $10 drink package you'd only have to cover the $5 difference so if you're someone who likes to enjoy some extra fancy cocktails on your cruise you're definitely going to want to know where the ship stands on that policy because it can affect which drink package is going to be the best deal for you. Now before we move on from the topic of drinks, I do have to mention one more thing and that is that MSC does not allow drinking in the pool. And that's okay with us. We actually look at having less spilled drinks and presumably less pee in the pool as being a good thing. But if you're someone that just loves having a drink in the pool, you may want to consider booking with another cruise line. Our next tip is to spend the afternoon and evening on the island. We find that most people are really excited to get off the ship as soon as possible, which leads to the island being the most busy in the late morning and early afternoon hours. But from our experience, it seems that by the late afternoon, everyone has had enough sun, 
They're ready to head back and get ready for dinner. But this is our favorite time to get off of the ship. It's at this time that you can have stretches of beach nearly all to yourselves and also bars nearly all to yourselves. And there's not a better place to watch the sunset than at the lighthouse bar. But when you're one of just a few customers at the bar, it can be really easy to get over served. So make sure you pace yourself so you can make it into the lighthouse party. Our ninth tip is another one relating to the island, and that is to not expect the same selection of food and drinks as you'll find on the ship. Now your drink package will work on the island and you will find some complimentary food as well, but the selection for both will be quite limited. But if you're like us and you're content eating cheeseburgers or drinking beers or simple cocktails or frozen drinks, then it shouldn't be a big issue. But if the lack of selection is a big issue for you, then it is super easy just to hop right back on the ship to grab some food or drinks, or you can never leave the ship at all. Our 10th and final tip for cruising with MSC is to consider booking a last minute cruise. But this one does come with a caveat as we would not recommend it to anybody who is not comfortable showing up to the cruise port with no boarding documents and potentially not even being assigned a room. Now to elaborate a little bit, we didn't even book our last cruise on the MSC Seaside until around 48 hours prior to that cruise being scheduled to set sail. And as a result of booking so late, we did get a really good deal, but we also discovered that we wouldn't even have our boarding documents or our luggage tag until we arrived at port. Now this turned out to not be a big issue, but what was an issue was that the room we ended up being assigned to was already occupied. All right guys, so this is a first. We booked this cruise extremely last minute. They assigned our room this morning and look at what we found. Unfortunately, this meant we had to spend about the next hour at the customer service desk while they tried to find us another room. But we were quite nervous because one, we had not left the port yet, Two, we had heard that we were sailing at 100% capacity. And three, the staff, they just were not being very reassuring. So they told us to come to guest services. We're really not sure how this is gonna turn out because the captain has said multiple times this is a completely full ship. They're also telling us that we have to go to our room to do our safety drill, but of course we don't actually have a room to go to. Yeah, participation is mandatory for all guests at bar today. Thank you. So they're just telling us that we need to be in our room and watch the safety thing and we still don't have a room. But fortunately for us, all ended well and due to the inconvenience and maybe also due to the fact that it was the only room left, we got upgraded to a balcony room. For us, the inconvenience and stress of not even knowing if we would have a room was worth the upgrade to that balcony. And while we certainly can't assure that you'll get a free upgrade if you book on MSC last minute, it's definitely a risk that we'd be willing to take again. Now, if you're still on the fence about cruising with MSC or having a hard time deciding which cruise experience is right for you, then we'd recommend watching this video next. Thanks for watching.